there folks i've got a quick little video for you here just some random stuff that's been happening over the last couple days mostly with the rock picker of course uh, I've been putting a lot of hours in on that field uh, and the one across the street. We're getting really close uh, to be, actually having the field you've been seeing me work in is pretty close to being done. I've got one little section left. So we had, I think, three or four more breakdowns with the rock picker. It's just the nature of that thing. It's a little bit tired and I'm doing things with it that were never intended to be done with it. So I've got some uh, footage of the wheel going back on. I've got some more brake fix stuff going on with that. And I can't remember entirely, but uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. Uh, you can give me a, a like if you like anything on this. And uh, thanks very much for watching. Take care. Hey, folks. Well, I got the weather to get this tire back on here now. So I'm just going to take a second and uh, clean up this axle shaft a little bit just so that things slide together well. Plus it's been out in the weather for a week. We're hoping to have a break from the rain here. Where I can really get some work done. That feels good. I went ahead and took the rest of the week off of work. What with, uh, what with all the coronavirus stuff going on. I don't know how seriously all the folks I work with are taking it. And not that I'm bashing them. I don't mean to. I'm just saying I, I don't know. And I can't really afford to get Meg sick and have her out of work. Or worse. So we just decided to use up some of my time off. I don't I don't have a ton, but I'm gonna use the rest of this week. It's always a balancing act for us because I have to try to keep enough time off so that when it comes time to make hay, I've got time off that I can take then. So this may end up kind of hurting, kind of trading one stress for another stress. You know, I'm trading the stress of being at work now in kind of uncertain times for the stress of trying to make hay after work. And that seal journal is not great. But there's nothing for it. It's the one we have. So I've got the outer bearing. It's all greased up, ready to rub. That's right here. I've got it just wrapped up in its plastic. And uh Got a little extra grease in there so that I could grease the seal on the back side of this hub a little bit more before that goes together. You don't ever want to put these uh, seals on dry. They actually want a little bit of grease to work in a happy way. So, see if I can get that on there without tearing it.
normally would just be putting the hub on, but I didn't feel like separating the hub from the uh, tire. So I'm just going for it. I feel like that should go on a little further than it's going. So let's see what it's like when this bearing goes in. nearly as far off as I thought we were. That's not terrible. That is not terrible. So, I had mentioned in the other video that there was a large washer you put on. That's what I'm cleaning up here. Just a big old thick flat washer. And that puts force against that inner race on the outer bearing and that sets the preload and then I've got a big castle nut here anybody knows the answer put it in the comments down below why is that called a castle nut bonus points Metric adjustable. General rule of thumb on setting preload is you kind of want to tighten up your bearings till they don't want to spin freely. Kind of where this is now, and then back it off just a skosh, just a whisker, about probably like there. See, now I've got good rotation. It's cold, so the grease is really thick. I've got good rotation. I don't have any lateral movement. That's right where that wants to be. I did remember to grab a new cotter pin. We'll set that in there. left is our hubcap. So I got the hubcap here, grab the hammer, and we just beat the rain. It's just starting to rain now. And that is as good as new, if not better. So if we can limp this thing through probably in another 30 or 40 hours of use, we'll be done with it. So if we don't get too awful much rain tonight, then I'll have this, uh, well, I'll have this field here that I'm standing in. I've got to do, yep, you can see there's standing water here. It's wet. That field over there has to get done. And then through the trees there, you can just maybe make out 
that's the field we've been working in. So, see how this poor old girl holds up. And uh, get after it. I'm going to head back to the yard and uh, see what I can get done inside. Well, good morning, folks. We've got a pretty common sight around here these days is the rock pickers back in the yard broke again. I've got this end cover off over here. Um, what happened is the bearing at the other end, I'll flip you around so you can The bearing at that end came apart on me last night. Um, that was quite the challenge getting out of there. I can't say enough good about this uh, air hammer I picked up recently. This is an Ingersoll air hammer. I'd have never got that race off of there without it. There's no room to work. I can't get a puller on that end. I'll show you what I ended up having to do here. I've got this tiny, stupid airline hooked up. Barely gave me enough flow to run that air hammer, but my compressor is still over in the other building. I needed almost 200 feet of hose to get over here with it. Everything's a mess. So. That's the inner race. This part here, that part there. This is the old one that came off that outside that's broke. I just, it was still in the scrap bin. That's the carrier. It's worn a little bit, but it's fine. And then that's the inner race. You can see it just, I think what happened is you can see right there that that outer race broke. And I think that let it open up enough that it just pulled the guts right out of the bearing. It's under tremendous load in there. What I ended up having to do, you can see where there's some hot spots on that race. This race material is super hard. I ended up having to take the air hammer and just get the tip of that punch. I could just get it on that tiny edge there and just keep working it around, mushroomed that bad because that's really, really hard. So I'm gonna finish taking this apart, to go see if I can get parts, see if we can get this back together. Be back with you in a bit. We got it back together. It spins. I don't think we bent anything any more than what it already was. I don't know if you remember from an earlier video, but this end of the shaft is a tiny bit bent. Um, I think that's why it comes back to rest like that. But when I spin it, you can see how bent it is. I think I can get away with it. I don't think it's really any worse than what it was. I am going to go ahead and check that key and check the set screws on this end when I put it back together. And we'll see what it looks like.